So um, I did my project on phylogenetics, so demonstrating the diversity of life, diversity and unity of life through phylogenetics. So the first thing I want to do is go through some concepts and ideas so you can understand my presentation. I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process and how I created my phylogenetic tree. And after that, I'm going to go through my results and my conclusion. See if I can work this thing. So, what is the diversity of life? What is phylogenetics? Well, the diversity of life is the result of 3.4 billion years of life on Earth evolving. Put in one word, I mean evolution. I mean the idea that organisms change over time and then we all come from a similar common ancestor. Come from a common ancestor. <clears throat> And also the idea that organisms started out in the ocean and then moved on to Earth, moved on to land. <clears throat> so phylogeny is the evolutionary history of an organism, which is about the, um, the common ancestor between organisms and how, where they go back, where they came from, what they evolved out of. And then bioinformatics is the science of collecting and analyzing biological and molecular data. Uh, this is thought to be kind of the union between computer science and biology. Meaning, uh, meaning that biologists today are using computer programs to compare data and um, create phylogenetic trees. <clears throat> so the first people to do this were Sarah and Wilson in 1967. They created a, um, a phylogenetic tree comparing apes and humans. The first thing they did was they compared the gene sequences and then they created a phylogenetic tree. Uh, they actually did it by hand then. Now we actually have programs, which I'll show you to create these phylogenetic trees. So, there are two different ways to create a phylogenetic tree. One is morphological, and one is phylogenetic. <clears throat> Morphology is what an organism looks like. It's their outward appearance. It could be the skeletal shape, the colors, the shape of their feathers. It could, for a plant, it could be uh, the shape of the leaf, leaves, things like that. And phylogeny is the, uh, the gene sequences, the DNA, the proteins, uh, so it, it appears on a deeper level, level of the cell. So this, the protein I used in my study was cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is a protein, which means it's made up of amino acids. It's involved in cellular respiration, which occurs in the mitochondria of the cell, which is the powerhouse it's where most of the power is produced. Uh, it's found in high concentrations and easily isolated, meaning that it's, we, we can actually find it for research like this. That's why it's good. And another reason it's good is because as the, as the uh, structure of cytochrome C will change, so will the phenotype of the organism, the way it looks like, its morphology. So here, it is, here is an example of a phylogenetic tree. Uh, I'm sorry, morphological tree. This tree was created using the astragalus, which is an ankle bone found in most hooved animals. And as you can see, it's in the cows, deers, hippos, pigs, peccary, and camels. And the whales are put there as an outfit because they, they lack that, um, that ankle bone. They don't have it, as you probably know. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, which brings me to my hypothesis. I hypothesize that whales and hippos will be demonstrated as having the nearest common ancestor on a phylogenetic tree that's created using protein sequences. What I mean by that is that hippos and whales will actually be right next to each other, very rela closely related, rather than being an outgroup on the tree. <clears throat> But before I get into that, I want to take you through a process of how I created my tree. So, bioinformatics to create phylogenetic trees. So the first thing I used, I used the National Center for Biotechnology Information. This is uh, open to the public. Anyone can access it. You could type this into Google and it would be the first thing that will pop up. Uh, it is open to the public. However, it's not something that anyone can alter or add to. It's not like a Wikipedia. It's only, all, it's only added to by biology centers around the world and uh, peer-reviewed journals. So it's, it's, it's a reliable and trustworthy source. So the first thing I did is I searched for um, what I was looking for. Uh, first thing I specified the protein. I'm looking for a protein sequence, not a nucleotide sequence or any other type of sequence. And then I typed in my protein, cytochrome C, and then Orchimus orca, which is the killer whale, or shamu. And it's the search engine is pretty simple to use, just type in what you're looking for. And as you can see, the first option was the option that I used. So, after selecting the option, I used, I was given a protein sequence. And as you know, the proteins are amino acids. And each one of those letters you see there, I hope you can see them, <laughs> um, are a different amino acid. 
biologists can have there are different types of amino acids, so biologists are able to look at the pro the sequence and say, okay, this is an M protein, this is an A amino acid, et cetera, et cetera, and that's how the sequence that sequence there is created. So it doesn't just pop out of thin air. Okay, so after we have our sequence, we then have to do something with it. This is a toolkit called Biology Workbench, and it has um, multiple programs for comparing these gene sequences and creating phylogenetic trees. It too is um, peer reviewed and open to the public. So the first thing I did using it was I added in my protein sequence. <laughs> this is pretty simple, you really just copy and paste the uh, sequence into the bar, and then as you can see, I, create, I put in multiple sequences for different animals that I need. Okay, so the program I used, like I said, there's multiple programs to use. What I used was Clustal W, which is the Multiple Sequence Alignment Program. It takes, mul it's, it's high powered, but it's also very easy to use. It, uh, I'll show you what I mean. There are multiple options here. Many things you can change to make this complex or as simple as you need to be. In my case, I only changed one thing. I changed it to be a rooted tree versus an unrooted tree. And that's because, uh, because a rooted tree in, um, infers common ancestry, which as you can remember from my hypothesis, I need to know. While the unrooted tree just kind of shows the organisms out of like a branch. So after I inputted the program, I was given a phylogenetic tree. So it's very simple to use, and if you have any questions afterwards about it, you're welcome to ask me. So, which brings back to my hypothesis. Again, my hypothesis was that whales and hippos will be demonstrated as having the nearest common ancestor on a phylogenetic tree to create these protein sequences. They'll be close, more closely related than any other organism on the tree, that's what I mean. <laughs> so, in order for that to be true, the morphological tree I showed you before has to be incorrect. So let's look back over that morphological tree. <coughs> Okay, so as we know, this tree compared the stragglers bone, which is an, the ankle bone in the hooked animals, and because, it, because the whales lack it, they were put outside of it. They weren't, so according to this phylogenetic tree, they aren't very related to any of those animals in here, including the hippopotamus, which you see there. However, when I didn't put in the data, I got a phylogenetic tree, I got that. So according to genetics and the actual DNA sequences, Hippos and whales are actually more related than we initially thought through morphology. This also supports another hypothesis about, um, excuse me, um, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Another hypothesis that stated that whales came from a semi-aquatic hippo-like common ancestor, which you see in the pointer work, you see there. <laughs> It's a little taller than I expected. <laughs> um, and so they actually, so it is believed because of this kind of de this kind of data that whales came from a more semi-aquatic hippo-like creature. And this also answers a question about where mammals on land came from, because uh, we have mammals in the sea, as you know, like with whales and hip and excuse me, dolphins. But we weren't sure in a lot for a lot while there if they evolved separately and they evolved from other fish into a mammal-like aquatic animal or if they came from a, a land mammal, which is what this shows, that they actually did come from a land mammal. <clears throat> so, to go back to my hypothesis, again, my hypothesis was that whales and hippos will be more closely related than any other on the tree. And so the morphological tree would have to be incorrect because the evidence supports my hypothesis. So, in conclusion, I really like those pictures. I'm very proud of myself for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> using morphology, these animals that are, are very different, they did not, they're not considered very closely related. But using the genetic data from protein sequences inside the body, we actually found that they're more, a lot, very, very related. They're actually quite related. Yeah. And this all, and so, to conclude, I have a couple things I want to tell you of, that you already know, actually. Phylogenetic trees like this and other phylogenetic data are perfect for, for answering these questions because they answer three questions right here. Answered the question of the relationship between whales and hippos. It answered, answered where land mammals came from and if the whale evolved from a semi-aquatic um, 
animal like the hippo. So that's all. Thank you. <laughs>